Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Like the song says, you are a promise keeper. No word you say will come back to you avoid, Lord. So, Lord, as we look into this day, July 4th, family, fun, barbecue, friends, we actually just have your way and prepare us through this word that we're about to receive to step and be, speak a word in season to somebody that we might encounter, interact with. So, Lord, we ask that you just uh, uh, touch us afresh so that we can hear what we need to hear today through the man of God. Anoint him so he can speak a word in season, specific to the audience that's watching. So we surrender the rest of the service over to you and ask that you have your way, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. So it is July 4th. Yes, 4th of July. Our so, nation's Independence Day. Yeah. It is, that's the irony because the nation has an Independence Day and then the people within the nation <laughs> are looking for independence. And we celebrate Independence Day, but yet, you know, there's still uh, <laughs> some issues. Free-ish. <laughs> well, that was good. Yeah. Minister Lisa. Yes. That's right. Yep. Uh, Free-ish. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was speaking about Juneteenth. Yes. Which is the establishment, finally, of a holiday mm -hmm. that celebrates the independence of uh, African Americans from slavery yep. in this country. It's interesting because, you know, the nation celebrate its independence and there's a lot of history that is untold, mm -hmm. the history that was mistold, mm -hmm. <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> on purpose, intentionally, and then there's history that really happened that actually explains the complicated past, a uh, checkered past, yeah, America, but a complicated past. It wasn't mm -hmm. as simple as people would make it out to be on both sides yep. the, the, of the extreme, whether left mm -hmm. or right, uh, doesn't matter. You know, uh, interesting in history, when you think about uh, Thomas Jefferson and, and that Declaration of Independence, and we can get that statement up there, yes. you know, because this is just such an important statement. Um, I found that many people haven't even read the Constitution or read the Declaration of Independence. I, <laughs> I keep a copy with me, all the amendments. <laughs> I, I read it, you know, I, I, I don't expect you all to read all the things that I read, but those things fascinate me because I, I want to understand. It's expressing the feelings mm -hmm. of, 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 of a people who are now declaring their independence from uh, the rule of Great Britain, yep. English rule, mm -hmm. right, and, and, and the king, you know. And Thomas Jefferson penned this, uh, and the story goes that he penned it in one night, overnight. Uh, he was in Philadelphia uh, on July 4th, 1776. Mm -hmm. he, he presented it, and the document was called the Declaration of Independence. And it proclaimed that all men are created equal. Um, and, and, and as you can see, we have it on the screen behind us that all men are created and that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness we often hear the life the right to life liberty mm -hmm. and the pursuit of happiness but we don't pay enough attention to what precedes that yep and what precedes it is that all men are created equal so equality is foundational human equality is foundational to rights mm -hmm. if we're going to have to talk about human rights yep. all right we have to begin with that statement, mm -hmm. and that statement begins with the equality of all humanity. And, but, and then we also got to look at the word self-evident, uh, because that's another uh, you know, expression that where do we find this? And, we're you looking know. at, it refers to, actually refers to the natural order. Mm -hmm. and let me just say this, because the, the, the document was proclaiming that all men are created equal, meaning all white male citizens yes. <laughs> yes. in the colonies mm -hmm. had equal political rights mm -hmm. with the white male citizens of England. Yes. So it didn't include... Indian, the Native uh, Americans. In Native American. Didn't include... Uh, African uh, slaves. Black slaves. Yep. It didn't include women. Nope. Did not include women. It was all, you know, male, uh, <laughs> male driven. And the original draft of the document, a little history for y'all, all right? <laughs> the original draft of the document blamed the King of England uh, for both the slave trade and slave holding in America, <laughs> which, which the original document called, called it a cruel war against human nature itself and 
execrable, detestable commerce. Mm. That's what it called the document. But the Continental Congress removed all of Jefferson's references to slavery. Mm. And they said it was not the time to wrestle with such an issue. (laughs) All right, so from the founding of the nation, many Americans struggle with the hypocrisy of a revolution declaring freedom and equality for all people predominantly scripted by slave owners. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said that, you know, he felt that the slave trade should be abolished and slave labor should be abolished, but not in his lifetime. Yeah. So (laughs) the economy of slaves and and, 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 and that that workforce uh, was in question at the very establishment of the nation Mm -hmm. and the very declaration of its independence from British rule. So at the inception of American society was the issue, the conflict with that hypocrisy, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. And, and here we are, you know, celebrating it, you know, and elements of one nation under God yes. and, and all of that. And, <laughs> and, and, and what does that mean, you know? So when we talk about the, 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 the work of the Holy Spirit, the person and work of the Holy Spirit, because it, it, it ties back to that, because there's a work of the Holy Spirit uh, the person of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer, what he's doing in those who have surrendered their lives mm-hmm. to the authority of the kingdom of God, the rule of God, and surrendered to Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is at work in the believer, forming and fashioning them into the image of Jesus Christ. So that's spiritual formation, that's discipleship, mm-hmm. yep. that's spiritual growth and development, right? And the work in the church, the, 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 the entity that God left here, the assembly that Jesus said he would build that would be ambassadors, you know, and witnesses of the rule of God in human society. And we demonstrate the rule of God in the way we live our lives. Mm-hmm. Some people live as, no, as though there's no God. Yep. We live as though there is one God who revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. So there's a work in the church. It's, it's missions, it's structure, it's influence on, on every aspect of society, politics, economics, art, literature, entertainment. Christianity has had an impact, incredible impact, on the development of human society over the last 2,000 years, especially Western civilization. Mm-hmm. Christianity was the driving force for the development and progression of Western civilization. Even to the point of education. You know, because the universities, they, they, right. But well, they felt that if uh, a man who could not read the Bible has a potential to become a minister of society. Wow. You know, wow. So, so they push education uh, in order for people to start being able to read the Bible. Yeah, and, and when Christianity started, it started amongst the illiterate mm-hmm. because in Rome, the literacy rate amongst the Jews mm-hmm. because they had to read the Torah. They were taught. This was yep. built that way. But when Christianity shifted from predominantly Jewish Christians and opened up to the Gentiles, right, the Apostle Paul, uh, most of the Gentiles who were coming, they were illiterate. They didn't know how to yep. read or write. It did, Christianity did reach into halls of power and business people and government and whatnot. But for the most part, it was people who were illiterate. And that pretty much continued into the priesthood where the the priests were the ones who were the academics, the intellectuals, Mm -hmm. and they studied science and arts and mathematics and whatnot. And it's not until we we move further through history, Mm -hmm. uh, the Reformation primarily, that all of a sudden this began to now get into the hands of of the common person. So it's, it's been a journey. Yes. It's been a long journey. So when we think about the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer, in the church, Right? This, Jesus said, I'll build my church and the mm-hmm. gates of hell won't prevail. So it's spiritual work in the church. It, it, it is the work in the humanity of the church as well as the spirituality of the church, the structure of the church, its impact on society, politics, all of that. But also his work in the world, the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Because on the day of Pentecost, what was the word? I will pour out the fulfillment mm-hmm. of the prophecy to Joel, by Joel. Mm-hmm. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Mm -hmm. And we think that the only work of the Holy Spirit, pouring it out on all flesh, getting people saved, (laughs) building the church. No, but he said Mm -hmm. on all flesh. And more than prophesy and 
you know, um, mm -hmm. the usual, you know, <laughs> have visions and dreams. Yes. No, no. The Holy Spirit is at work in, in the world. And this is where many believers, and, and I know that um, last week we talked about, you know, how we are given a lens yes. through which we see Scripture, mm -hmm. through which we read and understand Christianity. You know, but if we have to keep tweaking that lens mm -hmm. through learning and studying and growing. You know, so when we think about the work of the Holy Spirit in the world, we're talking about His, his work with regard to sin mm -hmm. in all of its manifestations. And essentially, the Bible expresses sin as open rebellion against the authority of God. Mm. See? Open, uh, uh, open rebellion against, against the authority, authority of, of God. God. And that translates into rebellion against any constituted authority. Mm. We have a problem being told what to do. Yes, we do. Whether we really it's, it's so uh, true. <laughs> on, a, on a family level, in that institution, whether it's a societal government, yep. we have a problem. You know, I, I, I mean, how many times, and you've had children, right? We had to tell you, and now you're telling your kids. No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> and they're arguing, I want that. Mm -hmm. I, I want to have that. I want to do that. And it's just this rebellion. To, uh, against boundaries and rules yep. and regulations, right, and order. So essentially, humanity is in rebellion against the order of God, mm -hmm. the rule and sovereignty of God. And that manifests itself in individual beings, yep. right, the person. It manifests itself in the institution of family, by society trying to redefine family. Mm -hmm. You gave a great word uh, the week before last, when you talked about as goes the father, so goes the family. With mm -hmm. Father's Day, so yes. goes the family. Mm -hmm. And the family is foundational to society. Yep. You know, and government, family, and the church uh, are the institutions that God has established for the ordering of society. So sin manifests itself in the individual, mm -hmm. manifests itself in, in the society, uh, in systems and structures, policies and legal codes, you know, which we're talking about America today <laughs> and its policies, right? Uh, it manifests itself ecclesially in the church. You have sin, mm -hmm. the sin, you know, and, and, and corruption and rebellion against order, even within the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, and also in, in um, so we, individual, society, uh, the church ecclesially mm -hmm. and cosmically because sin is manifested in rebellion against God in the realm of angelic beings, mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm, in the realm of spiritual beings. And you know, the Bible gives us a little revelation of that realm and these, these beings. We know that they're highly intelligent, they're powerful, <laughs> but we, we don't really know a lot about them, yeah. all right? We know that they, they, they have supported God, done the work and service of God in the earth. We know that there's some who are in rebellion you know, that's spiritual, spiritual yeah, warfare no. class. And it's funny because so many people want to know more about that, but no, let's learn about this. Yeah, we're, we have a hard we're, time we're, dealing with we're this. We're all feet are hitting the ground. <laughs> let's deal, deal with that. You, know, you, you, you can barely get out your home without the tension and things like that. Exactly. So, so, so the Holy Spirit is dealing with sin, mm -hmm. bringing a conviction. It's not just, you know, making you feel bad about it. No, it's, it's engaging mm -hmm. in it's engaging the rational soul of the human person to understand that sin doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we think that it does work. So we'll try to use it <laughs> to, to, you know, feed our ambitions, whether political ambitions, economic, fame, power, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, you know. So the Holy Spirit is convincing the world that that rebellion against the order of God doesn't work. So humanity continues to fail. So so righteousness, uh, convincing the world about holiness and justice, not only the holiness or separateness of God, but the holiness of the human species, that we are to be separated and different from all other species. Mm -hmm. We're not to act like animals. animals yes. We're not yeah. to lower ourselves to mm -hmm. that place. And we're not to think ourselves more highly and exalt ourselves to places of divinity and think <laughs> we're God. <laughs> That's another subject. <laughs> yeah. So holiness, that separateness, that otherness that we as human beings are supposed to bear in the image of God as we reflect. The Holy Spirit is dealing in the world when it comes to issues of justice, inequity, uh, unfairness, you know, issues of fairness and, and mm -hmm. inequality uh, in terms of how power is distributed and legitimized, uh, how uh, economics is distributed. And, and let me tell you something. 
And, and the more I go back now, I got, I got, got goosebumps because I'm in a study of Jesus' words, you know, and, and looking at some of the things that he said. And some of the things that he said there, we have kind of softened them, you know, but they were radical. <laughs> they were revolutionary. When he said to his disciples, unless you take up your cross and follow me, right, you can't be my disciple. Well, we say that the cross is, well, you know, that's about, um, you know, denying yourself <laughs> of the things that you want to do and experience in life. And the burdens that you and, have to carry. Yeah, the, the burdens you have no to carry, to, whether yep. it's, and some mm -hmm. believe it's sickness or mm -hmm. disease or calamity mm -hmm. or problems. And uh, no, Jesus was, Jesus, the cross was a Roman symbol mm -hmm. of, of insurrection. The cross is where the Roman government punished people. Yep. All right, for rebelling against the government, mm -hmm. for rebelling against the system. It was insurrection. <laughs> he was brought into court, all right, and he hung on that cross because he was considered an insurrectionist. Mm -hmm. So Jesus wasn't telling them, well, you know, you, you, you got to carry a cross. <laughs> no, he was saying, look, when you follow me, understand, mm -hmm. this, this is your destiny. Yep. You are actually bringing here. What did he announce? The kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. He was announcing a new kingdom yep. with a new king. It was him. So essentially, he was going around preaching, and the Roman government was listening that, hey, I'm ushering a new, new kingdom. <laughs> and when he said, my kingdom is not of this world, he didn't mean it was spiritual and heavenly. He was saying that it's not a product of this earth. Don't mm -hmm. judge it by earthly systems and structures, political, economic, etc. It's a different kind of a kingdom with a different nature. That's what he was saying. He wasn't saying it was up in space somewhere. <laughs> so Jesus was a, a revolutionary. And that's why, they, they, that, that's why he was crucified for insurrection. So when he was telling his, 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 his followers, you know, his disciples, that you better be ready to take up your cross. It's like when, when the, the mother brought the two sons of Jesus and said, I want my son to right. sit on your left mm -hmm. and your right. And Jesus said, that's, that's not my authority to give. The father determines who has positions and powers, right? Yes. Uh, he's the one who positions individuals. And he said, but can you drink of the cup that I have to drink of? And, you know, everybody, yeah, no problem. No, the cup of death. All of that had to do. So he was talking when he said, take up your cross, he was talking about, this is your destiny. Mm -hmm. If you join me and follow me, you can end up on one of these <laughs> because you're going to be considered a rebel. And as we see in the Gospels and in the epistles, uh, the letters of Paul and all the, you see that the way, you know, individuals die, you know, from uh, Peter, Peter, James. hung on a cross, yes, upside, upside down, down. James. tortured. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I, so he was saying, you're yep. an insurrectionist. Mm -hmm. Why? He's saying because you're going against the grain yes. of established authority mm -hmm. and you're bringing in the authority of God. It's the same thing today. As, as believers, yes, we respect government. Mm -hmm. We respect the order, all right? But we also subscribe to a transcendent yep. order. And there are times when the naturally established order of human government is in conflict yep. with, the, with, with, with God. And we have to take a position that that's the higher order that we subscribe to. So essentially, you know, I, that was serious stuff. <laughs> I, you, you got me off on that. But that his justice, you know. So what I was saying is like the Sermon on the Mount when he talked about um, the blessed are you who are poor, mm -hmm. all right, because your poverty is going to turn into wealth and success. You're going to be... Best of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, all right? So those who have been the victims of injustice and inequity, they're going to be blessed. He said, blessed are you who are poor because the rich are going to be brought down. He was talking about a radical switch in the political and social mm. structure. Yes. That's what he's talking about. If I've got money and wealth, and you're preaching that <laughs> I, the, the, the first is going to be last and the last is going to be first. Mm -hmm. you, you're talking a radical shift in the social and political structure. Yep. That's what he was saying, folks. Yeah, we often we read it and we don't really read it in the context. 
Because we've got to say, well, how did the Jewish audience understand this? And what were the Jews looking for? They were looking a for a mm-hmm. savior, a messiah, a, messiah, a mm-hmm. king mm-hmm. who would overthrow the, yep. the, 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 any oppressive government that they were under and reestablish them. When he said to his disciples, you know, you're going to sit with me on 12 thrones, right? What was that? That was symbolic of him reconstituting the nation of Israel, mm-hmm. the old 12, empire, 12 regathering of the 12 tribes, mm-hmm. restoration. Because remember, they were divided, right? Regathering them in one. So he was, he was revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> Not this sweet, you know, love, let's all love each other. <laughs> no, Can't we all get along? He, uh, he, you he, didn't read the book. Yeah, because when you read some of his, he was so sarcastic too. I, oh man, he said, yes. I, I didn't come to bring, bring peace, I came to bring a sword. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah. we miss that kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> because we don't read it. We don't read it. We got to read it. So, so the Holy Spirit is at work dealing on issues of holiness, dealing with issues of justice. So whether, whether Christian or not, whenever you see any issues going on where people are fighting for justice, the Holy Spirit is at work there. Mm-hmm. See, we, we got, he can't be at work unless the Christians are there. He can't be mm-hmm. at work unless Jesus is there or belief in Jesus is there. No, thank God that God has always worked before yes. there was Jesus yep. Christ, before the incarnation. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was at work, right, in nations, yep. in national entities, doing his thing. But the holiness and justice of God. So he's at work in the world dealing with sin, with righteousness, and with judgment. And by judgment, we just don't mean, you know, Armageddon and all that kind <laughs> of stuff. We mean, number one, the failure of humanity without God. All right, so he's convincing humanity that any social institution, social structure, utopian world that you look forward to, because we're all going to eventually get better, <laughs> and all the good in humanity is going to turn into a fully good society, and we're going to have peace and concord and justice. It ain't going to happen. Nope. Not going to happen. So the Holy Spirit has to convince the world that, that the, in the failure of humanity without God, mm-hmm. without God, Humanity is going to be going to, going to fail no matter yep. what systems and structures they build, institutions they build. It's going to fail no matter what. And ultimately, yes, judgment. A there's going to be reckoning. a day of reckoning. Yes. You know, I, that's, why, that's why we've got to study the scripture. I get goosebumps. Saying, I, I'm in my zone, <laughs> man. You know, I'm in my zone. Here. Listen, I, I get goosebumps. Why? Because when you study the scripture and allow it to speak to you, allow it to teach you, instead of you trying to force it into a frame that you've been given, right? Or a lens Mm -hmm. that you've been given. Let the scripture speak to you. That's what it is to study the scripture. So, you know, when when Jesus says, love love your enemies, right? And we take that and we universalize it. Number one, he was talking to the Jews Mm -hmm. and he was quoting from the Old Testament that they should have love and respect for each other. So he was talking about how they treated each other. He wasn't talking about loving your enemies outside. No, because what did they do in the Old Testament? Kill everybody, yep. crush them, mm-hmm. tear them down, tear down their idols, and, and, and don't pick, don't, don't, don't spare anybody. So I, we, we've got to, because it's paradoxical yes. if you don't read it carefully. All right? So, and, and when he said, my kingdom's not of this world, and why he was a threat, all right, because they know that the only way that the kingdom of God would replace the Roman Empire or any other government would have to be by force. Mm-hmm. Jesus himself said, the, when the strong man, all right, is there, unchallenged, his goods are in place. Mm-hmm. But when a stronger than him comes, <laughs> right, yep. and spoils his goods, that's, that's language of force. Yep. So we can't think of Christianity, you know, this, this I, I love you, can't we all go <laughs> No, bec- the same people who say that are the same people who say, there's going to be an Armageddon, it's going to be a judgment, God's going to come back, he's going to deal with all nations. That's force, folks. Yeah. <laughs> that's power. That's, you know, mm-hmm. so let's, let's understand this clearly. We don't have all the time to, to go over it, but, but it just shows how, how we, we miss what he's actually saying mm-hmm. because we have all of these other influences that come in to try to give us a lens that makes it look better. You've got to understand it in the context. He was talking to a Jewish people, all right? Even the Gentiles that he spoke to, you've got to understand their context. Context is one of the most important laws and rules of hermeneutics, Mm -hmm. of biblical interpretation. So, the work of the Holy Spirit. So, what is he dealing with? He's dealing with power. Yes. He's dealing with the power structures 
in human society, no matter what form of government it may be. All right, God still judges that government. When you read Psalm 82, it tells you he judges that, that government as to issues of justice, mm -hmm. issues of righteousness, issues of sin, right? Uh, all of that. He's dealing with it, whether it's communist China, <laughs> where, whether it's socialist uh, uh, Russia, it doesn't matter. Or whether it's democratic, supposedly democratic Republic of the United States, right? <laughs> you know, he is involved, he's working. And I get excited because when I, when I see through that lens and I watch the news, right, I'm, I'm watching the Holy Spirit at work. Mm. You know, we limit him to what's going on in the church. Mm. And, we, and we try to build that up and express and get everybody here so you can see the Holy Spirit. No, he's bigger than that, folks. He's bigger than us. Yes. I, I, I'm pumped here. No, that's good. It's good. You know, and, and I think you know, a lot of viewers who are watching is, is, are, are going to ask the same question. Is how do I start looking for, you know, that which you, which you just said. I, I'm looking and seeing the Holy Spirit moving and working. How do I see that? How do I become sensitized or sensitive to that uh, movement of the Holy Spirit? Well, I, you're tuning in here. <laughs> That's where it starts. Yes. You've got to be in church. Mm -hmm. You've got to be part of the community of faith. Yep. You've got to be in the Word. And if we all could simply pick up the Bible and understand it, he would not, Jesus would have not given the teaching gifts, mm -hmm. the apostolic gifts. He wouldn't have given the fivefold ministry. He wouldn't have given teachers, mm -hmm. all right, who have an anointing to teach. So they're going to see things. People say, well, okay, what Bible does Pastor use? <laughs> and they feel that if they get the Bible that I read, they're going to see what I see. No, yeah. I, I, I have a gift. I have an anointing mm -hmm. to do this. And besides, I support that gift by studying and reading, right, and exposing myself to information so that God can speak to me about that information. But that's a gift. That's yeah, an anointing. It's, it's, it's good because you'll find people trying to do the same thing, get frustrated, not realizing that might not be their gift. Exactly. Exactly. So, I said it weeks ago, human history is a story of man's struggle for two things, political power mm -hmm. and economic power. And what is power? The ability to influence people, events, and outcomes. I'm going to say that to you again. What is power? The ability to influence people, events, and outcomes. You hear that? So the Holy Spirit, what is he doing? He's moving within the power structures in human society. There's a wonderful passage. We can go to it in um, the book of Acts, chapter 17. And the Apostle Paul is speaking to, at the Areopagus, and, and he's talking to the high intellectuals, the philosophers who gather to, you know, to exchange ideas. And he notices <coughs> excuse me, an opportunity. And this is, this is what the question that you just asked, how do we know, all right? You, you, you have to stay sensitive. You build a relationship with God's word mm -hmm. and his spirit in the context of community, but it's building a relationship in God's, with God's word and his spirit. So Paul, he sees a, a, an inscription that says, to the unknown God. Mm -hmm. Because even though they had all these different gods, they realized they may have missed one. There may be another God out there that mm -hmm. we don't know about. So... We don't want to offend that one, so let's just put one there, the unknown God. Verse 23 in Acts chapter 17 in the New Living Translation. For I was walking along and I saw your many shrines, right? And one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. So Paul saw the opportunity. If, the God, if that God was unknown to them, he could now come in and say, I'm going to tell you who he is. Mm -hmm. Right, and you know that he's responding to a story. That also speaks to a story from a, another individual by the name of Epimenides, mm -hmm. who uh, was uh, there was an issue going on in Greece, and he ended up responding to it, but praying to this unknown god, and he ended up creating an altar to this unknown god, and actually the altar ended up going uh, barren. He didn't pay attention to it, and it, 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 something came up, and he went back to that altar. So there was a, a God was uh, uh, showing himself to these individuals through little cues, through ah, little responses, it. and that's Epimenides it. responded to it, and he added this to that because he really didn't know the fullness of this God that uh, responded to the ailment that they were dealing with. The Holy Spirit at work yes. in the minds mm -hmm. of men, yep. making them think about, mm -hmm. question yes. these things. Who is mm -hmm. God? What's, what's the nature of humanity? 
humanity. Yep. What's the nature of God? What does it mm -hmm. mean to be human? Yes. What does it mean to live in this world? Yep. All these philosophers and Plato and all that. Mm -hmm. Who is inspiring so, that? So Paul's response to is bigger than just his text because he has the answer for an age-old question that was going on with these individuals. So that conversation was not just something that Paul happened to step upon, but now God's deciding through Paul to reveal himself to these individuals to respond to that. Who is that unknown God? Come on, you're preaching good. <laughs> you're preaching good. You're preaching good. For I was walking along, I saw your many shrines, and one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God, whom you worship without knowing mm -hmm. is the one I'm telling you about. Yep. All right. <laughs> he is the God, verse 24, who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples and human hands can't serve his needs for he has no needs. Boy, that's the that yes. theology right there. <laughs> God is the all-sufficient one, yep. right? <laughs> he himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. I love this. You, you have a passion to, to get people excited about God. Yes. This is how I get excited, excited about God. <laughs> when I read his word, I get pumped. I get excited. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. And it continues, verse 26, from one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth and throughout human history. Mm -hmm. He decided beforehand when they should rise mm -hmm. and fall, and he determined their boundaries. Did you hear that? God's in control of human history, mm -hmm. his, his sovereignty and his providence. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Now, notice that if he's allowing them to grope for him, to, to feel their way towards him, he's purposely withholding mm -hmm. the full revelation of himself, mm -hmm. Ooh, man, which comes in Jesus happening. Christ. Yes, yes. Ooh, man, <laughs> I, 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 I can't. I, I, help me here. This is when we shout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So work their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Mm -hmm. For in him we live and move and exist. And, you know, Christians have hijacked that, <laughs> put a song, and I love mm -hmm. the song, but they're trying to say only the Christians live and move in him. Mm -hmm. No, all of creation lives and exists yes. in the power and presence of God. Mm -hmm. The scripture says concerning Jesus as the word, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Yep. And through his word, Jesus Christ, everything is held together. For in him we live and move and, and, and exist as some of your own prophets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier time, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead, mm -hmm. and that's Jesus Christ, yep. the resurrection from the dead. Mm -hmm. So God, and that's again, the work mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, which you beautifully brought out, that in these philosophers, in these thinkers, what's stirring them to ask these questions? What's inspiring mm -hmm. them? And that is the, the work of the Spirit of God. So God invades uh, human history, first in the person and work of Jesus Christ, right? Yep. He then, in, oh, should I say second, because God was always there. <laughs> but then on the day of Pentecost, he now in, once again invades human history in the person and work of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So 2,000 years ago in the conflict, all right, that was going on, God enters and says, announces the kingdom is at hand. Mm -hmm. The rule of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. And that's beautiful because, you know, we have the invisible war, and I don't want to get into uh, too much here because we're running out of time. We got, gosh, just two minutes left, all right? But, but the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, is made real by the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Mm, the it, Holy Spirit makes the kingdom yes. of Christ real, all right? The kingdom of Christ is made real by the person and work mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, all right? In the believer in the church and in the world. And again, Christians can be quite confused about his work in the world. 
in the book of Revelation, right? Because it's talking about the consummation of the age. Oh, man, we're running out of time. <laughs> it's talking about the consummation of the age, how things are going to come together. It says that he has made us priests and kings. And I've seen that text interpreted in many ways as though we are currently both. And kings are the businessmen, the money makers, <laughs> and yeah, you've heard that. Mm -hmm. and, and there's yep. a book actually written about that. Mm -hmm. And it created conflict because the yeah. kings wanted to start <laughs> being the priests, yep. and the priests wanted to be kings, you know, for the sake of the money. But we're not kings yet. We will be established. Our kingship will be established when his kingship is established. Mm -hmm. Now, he is essentially declared king, anointed king, but it's not until his kingdom is subdued that he actually takes that position fully. Yeah. And we will become kings with him. So what are we now? What priests. are we right now? We're priests. priests. Mm -hmm. We are priests. And as priests, we offer our bodies as sacrifices in worship mm -hmm. and praise, Romans 12, 12, 1. You know, our greatest form of worship is though, it's how we live out our faith uh, in the world. It's living the Christian difference. We do mm -hmm. that as priests. We join the ministry of, of, of Jesus in intercession. When Peter was in prison, mm -hmm. the scripture said the church made intercession for him. Yep. The church prayed for him. And the power of God moved, an angel is sent, and, and, and he's delivered. So we, we intercede on behalf of humanity. We join Christ in that spirit and ministry of intercession. We proclaim the rule of the, uh, of, of, of the kingdom over our lives because we live, like I said earlier, like God is present. Like we got to answer to somebody yep. <laughs> higher than us. We answer to a higher authority, right? We, we as priests, we, we, we connect people with God, right? We make disciples mm -hmm. out of those who surrender to his will. We engage the spiritual powers uh, of this world and their visible manifestations, right? We are a redemptive voice, prophetic voice, humanitarian voice, uh, uh, in, in a moral voice in, in the world. All these things we are doing. And what are we doing? We are interacting with the power structures. So history is essentially man's struggle for mm -hmm. both political power and economic power. Now, what do we mean by political power? We need to break that down in, an, in order to understand how it works in the world and how we, as the priests of God, respond to that. Yeah. And we got to do that next time. That's good. That's good. Boom. A lot of content. Not A lot bam. of content. Boom. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oof. Still a lot to learn, church. We still have a lot to learn. And, um, but as, as we learn it, we are required to apply it. And, um, you know, so, wow. He's overwhelmed. This is how he gets. Now his mind is going. And he's thinking, connecting <laughs> dots, connecting scriptures. I get it. I understand. You going to pray? No, you pray. You pray. I'll pray. Yeah, we need an altar call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I, yeah, Father, I, I call the body of Christ, yes, Lord. the believers, to repentance. To repentance for not placing the word in the all authority in their lives that it should take. Not exalting the word in a way that it is truly Lord over their lives. Father, I pray that you will create an awakening, a stir in the body of Christ around the world to not only reaffirm, but re-engage scripture, yes. knowing that that's the place where we get to know God on a very intimate, deep and profound level, when we wrestle through what the scripture says, when we wrestle through what Jesus says, it has an impact on us spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, physically even, and motivationally in terms of the choices that we make. Father, I pray for a new revival, an awakening to your word, and our relationship with that word. Yes. Thank you for the experiences of your presence through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for community. But Lord, we know that our roots, our foundation is in scripture. So Lord, let us turn back to the scripture and hunger and thirst for 
the word of God. Amen. That is where your love, your life, and your light are experienced. Let us meet you in the word. We ask you, Father, and we thank you for the fruit of this prayer. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. I'm pumped, man. Yeah, it was, I'm in my zone. It was a great, great message. Great now we have message. a minister, I think. Going to be yes, we have a minister that is going to lead you in a, a prayer. Hallelujah. Grace and peace, family. Thank you once again for joining us today for our virtual service here at Christian Cultural Center. Maybe right now, at this very moment, you are being moved into your, in your heart to enter into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. One theologian said this about the gospel. The gospel, the central message of Christianity, is that Jesus was born and he died and rose again and that his death was for our sins that we might receive forgiveness and new life in relationship to God now and forever through faith alone. In Romans 10 verse 9 it says this, that if we confess with our, your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if this is you, repeat this prayer after me. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes and simply say these words. God, thank you for speaking to me personally today. I recognize my need for you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the full price for my sins so that I, so that I, point it, to say it, so that I can be in right relationship with you. So family, if this, if you prayed this prayer for the first time, can you let us know? We want to come alongside you. We want to walk alongside you in this, this brand new uh, way of living, this brand new way of seeing life. So please, either text the number at the bottom of the screen or call the number next to that, next to that number, next to the text number, and we can, we want to get in contact with you. Thank you. We praise God that you have now joined the Ohana, the family of God. Amen. Amen, amen, and welcome, welcome to the family of believers. This is a large family. We're not the perfect family, but we are a family indeed. Uh, it, 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 we are working to strive to be the best Christ followers. And if you just joined this family, we want to say, ask that you text SAVE to 631-250-2688 or call 718-306-1061. We have individuals that are waiting to have a conversation about the next steps of this journey. And as we can walk with you, we're excited and looking forward to that. Amen. God's given his word, yes. his spirit, yes. and community. Yep. And as community, we are dedicated to your spiritual growth and development. You're not alone. You're Amen. Not alone. Amen. Good yep. stuff, man. Yes. So. Uh, today is 4th of July, yep. Independence Day, your barbecues. Please stay safe, be wise, and remember, the greatest independence you can experience is when you, Christ sets you free. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if you're free in me, you are free, free indeed. indeed. Yes. So, as we leave this place. <laughs> but never God's presence. Jesus is Lord. We period. Be we, believe we believe it. it we, we proclaim it. it and, and we're seeing it come, come to, to pass. pass. God bless and enjoy the rest of your Sunday.